Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'll be making a short response video to the video that Oddstarv and I recently did. For those that don't know, we recently made a video about the toxicity in Dead by Daylight, or toxicity, so to say. We made a tier list and we covered a lot of different topics such as hard tunneling, face camping, teabagging, and being blood out, as well as many others. This video, as a brief summary, is me giving my suggestions as to how to deal with the scenarios that I just named and a bunch of others. I read a lot of the comments and many people are bothered by things like teabagging at the exit gate, and hopefully in this video, as you listen to me, maybe I can give a suggestion or two so that you can enjoy the game and not be bothered by, you know, random players and what have you. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump right in, shall we? All right, and here you see right here we have our list with several different categories ranging from illegal, bannable, offensive, not nice, fine, and good. I'll be covering these from top to bottom and no particular order, just boom, 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 boom. Let's just jump right in. So the first, it's DDoSing, doxing, IRL. Unfortunately, I don't completely have like the best solution to dealing with something as severe as these examples right here. So for a lot of you, I know you probably remember, I believe it was about a year ago, Dead by Daylight had its security issue with people being DDoSed and doxed actually. And there was never a complete statement about that. I'm still not entirely sure what's going on with that. But as I and many others have recommended, as well as behavior themselves, they recommend that you, unfortunately, use a VPN if you need to, or just set your Steam settings so that it's not showing your IP to people. You would set it to never under the Steam settings, or to friends only, but never public to everyone, in other words. Next up, we have cheating. I know a lot of us deal with cheaters in Dead by Daylight. It's something that always rears its ugly head eventually at some point. Yada, 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 I get it. Unfortunately, again, there's not very much you can do about that, except just move on to the next game. You know you have a cheater. You just hope the game ends as quickly as possible. If you're playing killer, for example, just let them cheat. I know that sucks to hear. Let them cheat, open the door, and just move on. Or as a survivor, just try to die out of the game if it's if it cheating bothers you, that is. Or if you like cheating, then sit in there forever, if that's your thing, too. But just try to get out of the game as quickly as possible. Don't let them affect you, and just do your best to move on. Unfortunately, you can't disconnect out of games in which you're being held hostage, or you do get penalized. But if you don't mind a little penalty... I think that's also worth it. Unfortunately, again, you shouldn't have to do that in my personal opinion, but if it's necessary, then by all means, go for it. Using exploits, I would deem that as the same thing. If you're being held hostage, try your best to move on out of the game. Try not to be too bothered by such things. There's nothing like effectively that you can truly do about that. That's on behavior side, I would say. Hiding forever is an interesting one. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. Um, I've dealt with so many people that have done this. The games have taken like 20 minutes sometimes back then. Oh, God. The best thing you can do is... Now with in-game collapse, which is very nice, at least the game ends, but prior to in-game collapse, people could hide for ages, and the game would never end. I still have nightmares about that. But um, the best you can do in this situation is do your best to try to find them. Try not to hold it like as a grudge. Don't take it personally. I know that that's harder to do. I, I understand. But just try to move on and get out of that game as quickly as possible. I'll be saying a lot of like uh, overall the same responses to a lot of these topics. One Survivor DC... So I'll be talking about both sides on this one. As a killer, I, I get it. I totally get it. 3v1s, to me personally, are very boring. They are. And to others, 3v1s are very nice because they're easier games, which means easier quote-unquote wins for the killer. And as a survivor, there's nothing more annoying, for the most part, than your teammate disconnecting on you. Oh no, I got hit by the hatchet. I got run down by the chainsaw. I'm desync. I'm out of there. Bye-bye. 
Yeah, there's not too much you can do about that. Just uh, I'll give my example of what I do when my teammates DC. I hear the sound roam. I'm just like, oh, okay. And I'll play out the 3v1 usually. And for me, I don't like 3v1s, as I've said. I find them incredibly boring on both sides. But the thing is, I still have teammates, you know. So I do my best to be the best teammate that I can and get them out of there. And maybe they enjoy it, not so much me. And that's something that I do have to consider. So that's what I do is a killer. I prefer killing them as quickly as possible just to get out of the 3v1. I feel like a lot of people overall do not enjoy 3v1s. And I feel like I, not only am I helping myself, but I'm helping them as well. Oh, that's so tasty. Twitch ranting. So Twitch ranting is going into Twitch chats like, oh my god, I can't believe you did this to me. You tunneled me into the dirt. Blah, 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 blah. I'm telling my mom on you. This is a very simple one. Just ignore them. Move on. If they get very bad in your Twitch chat, obviously you can moderate the chat by, you know, timing them out, banning them if necessary, etc. That one's pretty straightforward. As well as stream sniping as well, I'll say. On to this one. Again, I believe it's just best to ignore it. I don't think stream sniping for me personally is a big deal. The only thing I would criticize about stream sniping in general, not even in Dead by Daylight, but any video game, I don't like when people are not subtle about stream sniping. So if you're being stream sniped by someone and they're craving attention, like, Mr. Streamer, I'm stream sniping your stream in front of... Five people, 50 people, 500 people, the number doesn't matter at the end of the day. I think that's, I think it's best to just ignore it and move on. That's about the best you can do. Don't give them like their five seconds of fame or what have you and just do your best to move on, as I've said. <clears throat> Denying achievements. This is funny because I've actually done this so many times. I don't do it anymore, but I've done it so many times. This one's frustrating, I know it is, but I would say don't take this one personally either. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't take this one personally. The thumbnail is funny, okay. Do not take this one personally. They're probably just trying to be, you know, an ass and deny you from your Michael Myers achievement or whatever, whatever achievement it is. Yeah, you just have to move on and hope the next game someone doesn't do that over and over and over again now this one is a very important one in my opinion full bleed out funnily enough i believe about maybe three nights ago <clears throat> i was playing with a friend against a ghost face that kept downing us over and over and over again never hooked us just constantly attempting to bleed us out and eventually he caught all of us or downed all of us and just walked up to me and teabagged for like two maybe three minutes just fully blood us out now me i don't mind killers doing that at all because this is how i see it they want to get a reaction out of you right how do they get that reaction out of you you go immediately to to post game chat and you type in things like oh yeah you're really boring um you're terrible at the game blah 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 and you've already given them their one I promise that's all they're looking for. This is going to sound like the wrong thing, but in my personal experience, this is what I feel to be the correct thing to do. Instantly leave the game. Don't even care. Just move on and try to find a new player to play against. I know that sounds incredibly difficult. Being blood out is super boring. I believe it's four minutes to be blood out through the entire timer. And this won't like be a thing completely after you're able to pick yourself up in the future, which is, I think, next year, I believe, in, like, a few months. But at the moment, just ignore them. They want you to react. Don't do it. Don't give them what they want. It doesn't matter. I promise. Killer slash Swift DC. I would say that's about the same as one Survivor DC. Yeah, I would say it's about the same. Although killers disconnecting can be funny because of 
you know, how people disconnect. But at the same time, I'll cover both sides briefly, though. As a killer, hmm, I think it's better to take your loss as opposed to disconnecting for certain things. Like, you couldn't catch a survivor or you've been stunned too many times. It happens to all of us. Doesn't matter. The game is not like a full-on esport, like a League of Legends game. It's not at the end of the day. And I don't think it's... I don't think it's super important to take the game that seriously to the point where you're angrily disconnecting and like ruining your day, but leaving the game, if that's what you choose to do at the end of the day, that's what you should do. And maybe play a different game if Dead by Daylight's just like putting you in a terrible mood. It's totally fine, as well as Survive with Friends disconnecting. As a killer, you do wait for a while to find a game sometimes, so I know that can be frustrating. But again, though, that's just how it is, and you just have to move on at the end of the day. Chat complaints. This is an interesting one, so let me drink some water to this one. A toast, if you will. A toast. Oh, boy. Chat complaints. <clears throat> I have my chat turned off pre-game and post-game. Not because of toxicity, but because people want attention so much and they say things that I just don't care about ever. Or sometimes it's funny chat and it's cool chat. But I would say, I'm not even making this number up, I would say probably maybe 50% of the time it's a bunch of stuff that I could have easily ignored and just don't care about. So as you can see in this little... This little image, um, it's like, yeah, report it, it worked. Fucking camper, you suck. Report it, XD. That's pretty much how they type in Dead by Daylight, actually. Move on, ignore them. So this is my mentality when I play Dead by Daylight every time I queue up. And this goes to people that have anxiety when playing Killer or Survivor. I've spoken to people that have actually dealt with that, if you believe that. You are one person with four random people, most likely. You don't know these four other people. So with that in mind, they should have less of an effect on you, if that makes sense. You have to really consider, why do I care what some random person is saying to me in a video game? I'm being called a camper by a random person. Do I need to defend myself? No, you don't need to. Do you want to? You can, but you don't need to. You can easily turn your chat off or just leave the game. And that's it. They don't matter anymore. Because they're just random players in a multiplayer game. And that's all they are at the end of the day. So that's my opinion on chat complaints, personally. Again, you can respond to all of that stuff if you want. <clears throat> I just don't recommend it. And I would say the same as far as bully squads go as well. Bully squads, for example, are people that are looking to push around a killer, usually like a full-on survive with friends and what have you. Bully squad is just like a term that's gone around in the game and community for such a long time. I think most of you know what that is. Uh, the flashlight clicking and all that stuff, just to try to get under your skin. Same as chat complaints, they're random people, shouldn't bother you. The game ends, and then at the end of the day, it's not like you're going to sleep with them. They don't matter. They're just random people. When I say sleep with them, I mean like, you know, like... Like you live with them, or... Nah, whatever. D-ranking MMR... I, I feel that that's a really brief one. I don't think people derank MMR as often as they used to, as we said in the video. Personally, I don't think there's very much to say about that one. Let me know if you think otherwise, but I, I don't think there's much to cover. It's not really something that goes on anymore. Full face camp. Okay. Okay. I actually like being face camp. I think it's hilarious. I think it's great content. I think it's funny because that means I've probably gotten under someone's skin and I think it's hilarious. So that's my take on full face camping. Now, I know many other players absolutely hate face camping with a passion. Think about this. 
you have two options. You can sit there and accept the face camp, or you can die on purpose quickly and get out of the game because you hate being face camp, which is understandable. It's very dull to play against a lot of the time. I understand that totally. But if you do the latter, what you're also doing is screwing over your teammates. They can't do the generators as fast sometimes. Maybe they're just a few seconds away from opening the door, but you died too quickly. That actually goes back to disconnecting as well. Same thing, pretty much. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're not being the best teammate that you can be. So you have to have that understanding in mind. Again, you're not forced to stay in the game if you're just like really frustrated with a leather face just sitting there revving his chainsaw at you, nodding his head and whatnot. By all means, leave the game, but I like staying around to help my team. I think it's the best thing. And plus, it goes also back to full bleed out. I think you're giving the killer what they want when you die super quickly. So that's something to at least consider. Hmm, hard tunneling. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Also, I don't mind hard tunneling either. I like being tunneled. It's fun. I get chased, and that's fun. I like being chased by the killer. It's like the most fun as a survivor for most of us, right? Obviously. I don't like seeing my teammates being hard tunneled because it makes me feel like I did something wrong, like I didn't help them enough. Like I see like a random Jake being tunneled into the dirt. It's like, did I do something wrong here? Or when obviously I'm like right in front of the killer as I save, but the killer will just go after the Jake, for example, like I said, wait 15, 20 seconds, what have you, and just down him again and hook him again. There's not too much you can really do about that outside of body blocking and running altruistic perks. I know, again, it's boring to play against. I get it, but it's a part of the game, and you have to understand that some people find that to be their version of fun within the game. And overall, for this entire list, what I just said applies to almost everything here. You don't have to find any of this fun to play against at all. In fact, I find a lot of it dull to play against. Like being blood out, I think it's boring as hell. It is. At the same time, I'm able to understand that they may find it fun to do. If that's their version of fun, then so be it. That's totally fine at the end of the day. And I am not entitled. I could probably use a better word. But I don't feel entitled enough to criticize another player of how to play the game, if that makes sense. So I don't mind any of that at all. The ones I've gone over are these two, full face camp and hard tunneling. At the same time, find it boring. If you want, don't. That is totally up to you. But I wouldn't recommend like holding a grudge again. It, it's just what someone wants to do at the end of the day. And if you give them a reaction, they've already won again. Teabagging is the same exact as the other two. Teabagging has been in multiplayer games for so many years, going back to Call of Duty, Halo, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So when I came to Dead by Daylight, I was so surprised by how much teabagging bothered other players. I don't do it anymore. I jokingly may do it like, oh God, I'm not even joking when I say this. Like once every two months, just for fun like as like a skit or something but i don't do it in a way that's lack of a better word um mocking i'm not mocking the other player i'm just doing it because it's control and you're crouching now many others more commonly will teabag you as bm or bad mannerism bad manners for those that don't know and there as you can see a survivor at the exit gate like <laughs> oh my god these images teabagging at the exit gate and you're being made fun of like haha you couldn't catch me lol this is going to sound a little coarse but i say just get over it it's crouching in a video game at the end of the day there's a there's a chance they're not even doing that to bother you there's a chance they just like seeing a character in a video game crouching over and over and over again so they just press control over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and I probably shouldn't say over and over and over again or my voice will die. But anyways, it's best to completely ignore teabagging. 
that's my best piece of advice. It's such a like minuscule thing in the video game. In video games in general, they want attention. Again, if you give them attention, they've already won. I'd say just move on. And don't take it personally again. Maybe they're just like, thank you or whatever, because there's no form of communication in Dead by Daylight other than two emotes and a couple other things, I guess, if you really get uh, creative about it, I guess. All right, on to dodging lobbies. I think this is a good thing to do. If you don't want to play against something or someone, just leave the lobby and find a new lobby. I don't think many are going to disagree with that, right? And I don't see it as a form of like weakness or whatever. That's about it. If you don't feel the vibe of a lobby, just leave. Like if you think someone might be a cheater, leave. If you think you might not have a good chance against a pre-made team, you can leave. That's fine too. It's your choice at the end of the day. And you shouldn't feel bad for doing anything like that. Yeah, that's about it. Filters and configuration. If you're having trouble seeing in Dead by Daylight, for example, and you throw in an NVIDIA filter, that's totally fine. Or reshade or et cetera. That's about it. I think we're overall, I believe anyways, way past the point of filters being like a way to give in-game advantages and stuff like that. And even if they did, that's not something you as a player can do anything about. Something that's out of your control should not bother you that much, if that makes sense. Because that's on behavior to handle things like that. So you as a player just need to take it to the chin and say, hey, it is what it is. Move on. Oh god, anti-fun perks is next. With a picture of Franklin's demise and Lightborn. Two perks I find hilarious to run sometimes. I know it's not fun to have your flashlight knocked out. It's not fun to see the killer using Lightborn because you don't get flashlight saves. I totally understand that. But again, it's how they're just playing the game. They're just perks in the game meant to be used in the video game. I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> That's all I've got. I, I don't know. You can find them unfun, yeah. But, you know, don't give someone a hard time over stuff like this. If that's what they choose to do, then so be it at the end of the day. Going full meta. Let's see. I'd like to tackle the killer side of this first. As you can see, built to last and a toolbox, brand new part and charges. It's the same as anti-fun perks. The person is playing the game the way they want to play it. They want to play it in a very optimal way, competitive way as best as they possibly can. I know it can be very boring to see the same stuff over and over and over again. Like just seeing the same builds, the same items, the best items, the best perks. In this example, as you can see, built to last in toolboxes and stuff, they make generators go very fast, right? If you can take anything away from that example in the image that you see right here, it's that the game ends fast against things like this. So get out of the game fast, get on to another game. Maybe the next game is really fun. Who knows? So that's about all I've got for you. Let the players use whatever they want. Who cares? <laughs> oh, I sound so rude when I say it that way, but I'm not. Four slowdowns. This one's very controversial. In the past, and for many of these actually, in the past I've complained about this. I don't complain about it anymore. I comment on it like, oh, this Wraith had four slowdowns. That's why, you know, it took forever. But that's not me complaining. That's just my observation. And I don't think having an observation like that is a bad thing. It's not, in fact. But if you go out of your way to absolutely harass someone like, oh, you absolute asshole you know fuck you for running four slowdowns well that's just silly and unnecessary in my opinion and if you really dislike a game like that just get out of there as quickly as possible if you die really fast so be it if you um 
it, just get out of the game as quickly as possible. If you really don't want to play against it, that's the best thing you can do. There's not much else to say about it. I know that one, it bothers people to like such an extreme level. I totally understand that. I find it very boring when I'm in a game for like 15 minutes and nothing is happening over and over and over other than kicking gens. But at the same time, I can understand why someone would run a build that's super strong like for regression perks. Because it's an easier way to win in the game and to do very well to kill everyone, which I totally understand. So at the end of the day, people do whatever they want, and I'm fine with that. And last but not least, Tex. To me, Tex are people just having fun, you know, vaulting the pallet in front of you, making you pick up their teammate. You pick their teammate up, you get flashlight saved. Okay, they got their nice little playoff. And they probably had fun with it. That's all it is at the end of the day. Tex in Dead by Daylight are just people enjoying themselves, you know, doing really cool things. And that's all it is. Don't see it as anything personal, them making like fun of you. That's not always the case. I promise it's not. They're just going for interesting things and you shouldn't hold a grudge at all. That was actually a lot faster than I anticipated. Yeah. If I could just close out this video, I would say overall, do not do not get bothered by the way other players are playing the game. Many of them bought the game and they're entitled to play the game the way they want. If they want to run four slowdowns and play the game for 20 minutes every single game. Yeah, it's dull, but that's just their way of playing the game. Just get out of the game and whatever, get a different killer. They probably won't do the same thing. Maybe, or maybe not. Who knows? The bully squad, four random survivors, just get out of there. They don't matter. Uh, with their players in a video game, it, it doesn't matter. Being blood out, don't react to it. The person wants you to be bothered. They want, they want that reaction out of you. Overall, again, I'd just be repeating myself. Just play... Play Dead by Daylight if you want to, if you find it fun. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy what little things you can in the game. Like, if you enjoy running head-on and getting three head-on saves a game, go for it. Head-on's fun to use. It's amazing. If you enjoy using Blast Mine and getting a bunch of generator blinds on the killer and you find it hilarious, go for it. Do these things before the game ends and you will find yourself enjoying it a lot more. Does that make sense at all? I think that people over-index way too much on winning and less about having fun in the game, if that makes sense. That's what I would encourage people to do. I, for example, die really fast, but <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun recently running Blast Mine before I die. <laughs> it is absolutely hilarious. But anyways, I'm going to just cut the video off right there. I've gone over every topic and I don't want to repeat myself too much. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and the other video hopefully as well. And I'll see you guys in the future. Thanks for hanging out.